welcome to this video on inheritance. This is part of the Java Object Oriented Programming series. My name's Andy Wicks and in this video I'm going to give you an overview of how inheritance is used in Java. We'll get on to the detail in a later video. Let's start at the beginning. The overview of the overview, really. Large programs can be broken down into sections and then each section can be programmed separately and that has advantages. It makes finding errors much easier and it also makes programs much more flexible for the programmer. You can change things more quickly and more easily. There are many ways of breaking down problems but this is a series on object-oriented programming, OOP for short. So I'm going to show you the object-oriented programming bits. Classes are the things we need. Forget the code, that's trivial. Concentrate on the things your program will handle. Each of these things becomes a class with its own variables and methods. And you can modify a thing and that changes your program automatically. That makes programming much easier. Let's have a look at a specific problem. Let's suppose I would like to have a set of programs which allow students to create materials for their successors. What are the things, the classes, that my program will need? And what should these classes contain? Well, let's deal with the first question. The classes themselves. An atom is a small piece of learning, for example loops or inheritance. A topic is an area to be covered, so object-oriented programming for example. And then there's a course, Java course. Of course a course like this will need a course tutor. And a course tutor wouldn't be there without by far the most important thing the student. But a lot of people get hung up on, oh, I've got to get my list exactly right, and once I've created my list, that's it. This is object-oriented programming. Don't worry if your list is incomplete. You can add classes later and link them later. All of this will come out as you program rather than straight away. Now, that doesn't mean to say you shouldn't sit down and plan your program. Obviously you should. The more planning you do, the better your program will be. But don't get hung up on the plan. It's the general idea that's important. If there are things that need to change, change them. So let's have a look at the Atom class. Let's have a look at its variables and methods. Well, I need to know who wrote the Atom. I need to know the date they started and the date they last amended it would be good. Uh, let's have some content in HTML format. That makes outputting much easier. And we'll have a popularity rating. Let's see how popular the, the Atom is. We can get the students to vote on how they see the Atom and then the most popular items appear at the top of the list. Well, what about the methods? Well, we need a public method to display an overview of the Atom. We need a public method to display the content. We need to display a link to the MP3. So that would allow us to click on something and the MP3 would play. We need a link to a video. That may be some, a video that's held locally or it may be a video that's held on the internet somewhere. Again, these things can all be amended. When you think, oh, I need another variable to... or, oh, I'll just add a method that... then do so. It's your program. It's the logic that matters. Not having the logic correct now. It should be as correct as you can, but it doesn't have to be completely correct. Don't get hung up on the detail. All these classes can be linked in something called an is-a relationship. There are three kinds of relationship, and is-a is by far the most common. A course is a collection of topics. A topic 
is a collection of atoms. So we have a class, course, and course contains all its variables and methods. I haven't got room to show you the variables and methods here, but I'm sure you can work all those out for yourself. Then we have the class topic, which contains its variables and methods. And finally for this one, we have the class atom, containing its variables and methods. Now comes the clever bit. What we're going to do is we're going to add a link between topic and course. This course is a collection of topics. So topic inherits from course. Think of it as looking at topic, saying, where do I get my information from? Oh, I get it from this one, course. Likewise, we can link atom and topic. Topic is a collection of atoms. So atom inherits from topic. So atom can say, well, where do I get this extra information from? Oh, I get it from topic and topic gets information from course. It's in effect the grandchild of course. So let's move on to inheritance generally. Topic inherits from course so all the public methods and variables in course are available to topic. Topic doesn't have to keep this data, doesn't have to keep the methods, doesn't have to recreate them. Topic has them automatically. Similarly, Atom inherits from Topic, so all the public methods and variables in both Topic and Course are available to Atom. And Atom doesn't have to keep this data or recreate these methods. They're all there automatically. But surely this is very clever programming, isn't it? Let's have a look at the coding. We have a class course, and course contains its variables and methods. That's nothing new. So how do we get topic to include all those methods and variables in itself? We use the word extends. So class topic extends course. This means that anything that's public in course is also available in topic. One word. Likewise, we can have class atom extends topic. That means that everything that's available in topic is also available to atom. And since the course variables and methods are available to topic, they're available to atom too. And that's quite good.